Greetings, I'm Neon Slice, and today I'm going to be showing you all of the locations for all of the treasures and expanded treasure map treasures in Resident Evil 4 Remake. In this video, we'll also be showing you some bonus gems that you can get from mini bosses and spin old locations from the expanded treasure map DLC. I recommend you do this on a new game plus and you try to go for all treasures and all requests in the same run. I will also be playing in assisted difficulty with infinite ammo, but you can do this with no accessories and pretty much just any hat or accessory that you want. Or if you want, you can just do this on a brand new playthrough, your first playthrough ever. So during the first attack in the village, you will be able to go up this path on the left where the chainsaw guy comes from. This is the path that leads to the farm. Before we go through the double doors, grab the ruby in the briefcase. During the same village section, we can go into the shotgun house and acquire a velvet blue from the rooftops. To get there, we have to go into the shotgun house, go up the stairs and out the window to the right. In the same area, we can find an expanded treasure map DLC treasure. It is in an ornate necklace right here. You can completely ignore this if you don't have the DLC. In the farm, after the village, we can go up to this windmill, wait for the windmill treasure container to be on the far right, and then shoot it once it's right there. The next treasure is inside the main building. To access it, go up to this window, shoot the yellow lock, go up to this drawer, and grab the treasure. Right after you grab the cog from the same building that we were just at, a brute will spawn in. This brute will drop a velvet blue gem. This is completely optional, it doesn't count as a treasure, but I wanted to show you some optional mini bosses. After you open the gate, turn around, go to the right, head across this door, jump down, and there will be a treasure chest. It's a flagon. At the Lakeside Settlement in Chapter 1, we can acquire an Expanded Treasure DLC. This is completely optional and you don't have to do it. In Chapter 2, after you acquire all of your weapons back in the Abandoned Factory, you will be able to find a Sapphire in the door on the right. In the Valley, we will be able to acquire three items. One is the Ruby that is required for the achievement, and one is a spinel, part of the treasure map DLC, and we need the small key inside of the main building. So this is how you do it. I'm going to be shooting the golden container that's part of the expanded treasure map spinel. And then I'm going to go into the main building to grab the small key, which is necessary for another treasure. After we acquire the small key, we're gonna go up the ladder, grab the eagle emblem, we're gonna cross this bridge, and on our way down we will be grabbing the spindle from the expanded treasure map that we dropped earlier. Then we're gonna go up this hill, and at the end of this hill there will be a ruby. This is the treasure that you need for the achievement. After that we're going to get another necessary treasure with the small key that we acquired in the valley. Go through the door and use it on this drawer. This is a missable item. If you don't get it during chapter 2 or 3, you won't be able to complete the achievement. After we open the door with the hexagonal emblem, we can get an expanded treasure right here, which is completely optional. In the same area, we can take out the enemies, we can crouch here, and we can acquire a sapphire. This is 
On the path that leads to the chief's manor, we can look up. There is a silver container with a treasure that we need. And right next to it, there's actually another treasure. Shoot the stick and then shoot the silver container. After that, we can turn around and take out the chainsaw enemy. This is completely optional if you want extra gems. He always drops an emerald. In the chief's manor, in this drawer, you can find a ruby. This is a necessary treasure. In the same house, we can acquire a small key. This is also necessary. In chapter 3, on our way back to the village square, we can use the small key that we find in the chief's manor to open the drawer in this house. So immediately after, we can use the insignia key and go into this building shoot the silver container and get the velvet blue. In the church graveyard, we can find an expanded treasure map treasure. Just look up at the golden container and shoot it. In the same area, next to the church entrance to the left, we can find another DLC treasure. Behind the church, we can acquire the elegant headdress. This is a necessary treasure. In the quarry, where you will later fight the giant, you can find a silver treasure right here. Shortly after, in the merchant's hideout, we can encounter a chest. This chest will hold one of the hexagonal pieces that we need later. In the fishing farm, we can acquire a bunch of things. The first one is an optional treasure that you can get from killing the brute. After that, we're gonna follow this path and get the antique pipe. In the same area, we can jump down before we get the boat fuel, go under this bridge thing, where the banalian is, there will be a chest. It is the hexagonal piece B. We will need this for later. In the same area, in the fish farm, we're gonna knife the lock, and there will be an optional treasure DLC. After that, I'm going to walk out of this door and go to the right into this hut, and open the drawer and there will be a small key. We will need this for another treasure. In chapter four, after we witness our first Plaga encounter, we can get the old way shrine key, which is used to get a bunch of treasures. So do not miss it. This is right before we get on the boat. This is after the boss, the lake boss, the lago. So, immediately after, in the large cave shrine, we can get two treasures. One is an optional expanded treasure map treasure, and another one is a default treasure. So, we're gonna do the expanded treasure first, which is located on the far left side of the cave. Just follow the path that I'm following. In the very same cave, in the large cave shrine, we can get a treasure that we need here, next to the fire thing. So after we get back on the boat, we're gonna go forward here, okay? And then we're gonna stop at these torches. Don't worry, if you miss this, you can go back. Just look at your map. We're gonna aim directly at this container right here so right here on the map it's very far up just shoot it and then go up these platforms 
use the old way shrine key and acquire both treasures. Continuing forward, once we get to the other puzzle in the small cave shrine, after we acquire the Blasphemer's Head, we can inspect this briefcase and get the final hexagonal piece C. Go up the ladder and immediately turn to the left and you can acquire another ruby. Immediately after, we have another expanded treasure DLC. Immediately after we get back on the boat, we're going to stick to the left. Stick to the left of the island or whatever this is and go to the chicken island. You can find a golden chicken egg here and a velvet blue, which is necessary for the achievement. In the very same area of the lake, we can go to the very middle, the central part of the lake, towards this ruins or whatever it is, is. it's a shipwreck, and we can find the two treasures. One is a weapon called Red Nine, and the other one is a gem. Note that if you've already grabbed the Red Nine in your previous playthrough, you won't be able to find the Red Nine here. You'll find a gold bar instead. So, after we grab all of that, we can go back to the lakeside settlement with our boat. Be careful because this area is a bit difficult to deal with at some point. So, we're gonna go into this room and use our small key that we grabbed at the fishing farm. There will be a gold bar here. In the very same area in the lakeside settlement, we can open this way shrine with the way shrine key. Oh, and don't forget to grab the red gemstone ring where you found Louise in chapter one. In the Lakeside Settlement, we can use the Insignia key to open this door that leads into a cave and to an expanded map treasure, which is completely optional. And then we can grab a small key, which is necessary for a mandatory treasure. This is the Forest Altar. Also, this isn't necessary, but you can grab a rhinoceros beetle here, which sells for 10k. I wanted to mention it because I know somebody else is going to tell me off in the comments if I don't. After we insert both heads to get the key to open the church, we can head back to the merchant's hideout. To the merchant's hideout, there is a place that you can access to with your boat or a ladder. So, we grabbed a small key in the forest altar. We can use this small key to open this drawer. You can find a pocket watch here. Immediately after that, right before we go to the giant, we can finally solve the hexagonal piece puzzle. To solve this, there are two solutions. I'm currently playing in assisted, so the solution will be different. The solution in assisted is bottom once and top once. In hardcore and professional is bottom right twice bottom left twice and top once. So on our way to fight El Gigante, we can encounter a way shrine. Open it and get the butterfly lamp. After you defeat the giant, he will drop a yellow diamond. This is not necessary, but I wanted to point it out. In the church, in chapter four, after we fight the giant, we can get the small key. After we rescue Ashley in chapter 5, we can go back into her room and there will be a yellow diamond. After we head up the ladder with Ashley, we can get an expanded treasure DLC optional thing here. This is also where you get some accessories. Right after we walk outside, go back into the room that we visited before 
use the final small key and grab the yellow diamond. Once we reach the village square again, I suggest you take out all of the enemies including the mini boss brute, ask Ashley to help you open this door and you can find an expanded treasure and a regular treasure. In the same chapter, we are going to head back to the chief's manor and ask Ashley to help us get this treasure up in the attic. Once you head back through the village square, you can kill the savage mutt. The savage mutt will drop a gem, which is optional. On our way to the cabin in the farm, we can kill the brute. He will drop an optional gem. But most importantly, we should get the Weishran mandatory treasure. After the cabin segment, we can get a DLC expanded treasure here. This is completely optional. In chapter 6 in the checkpoint, you can acquire a yellow diamond in this chest. Right after that section, before the Bella sisters boss, on the way to that location, we can get the Chalice of Atonement by going inside this house. So before you go in, you can throw a flashbang or a grenade or just Run in and kill this dude because he will try to grab you. Open the chest and you will get the Chalice of Atonement, located right here. So at the checkpoint itself, we can find a expanded treasure here, which will be a spinel. This is optional, again, completely optional, you don't need this. At the checkpoint area, we can also get another Way Shrine treasure here. Remember, you have to have gotten the old way shrine key, otherwise you will be missing all of these. So this is completely optional, but one of the Bella sisters will drop a gem, which is not necessary. Another boss treasure is Mendes's false eye. Don't forget to grab it after you defeat him. Directly after you defeat the final boss of the village, you can acquire the last treasure of the village. So this should grant you the achievement. We also have the final expanded treasure map of the village right there. In the castle, the very first treasure of the castle will be right behind the merchant's place. <laughs> anyway, it's located right after the chapter begins. The first optional expanded treasure treasure will be located right here after the cutscene with the cannons. Right after we use the cannon to open the way to proceed, we can go down the hole and continue this path and we will find the second treasure of the castle. After Ashley helps you open the door for you in the audience chamber, we can get the elegant perfume bottle inside of a chest. Right after that, we go through the wall and shoot the silver container and get the ruby. Oh, and yeah, after you kill Garador, he will drop a red barrel. In the treasury, we can find an expanded treasure and a spinel. Right after the sword puzzle, we can find a chest with a bangle in it. Right after that, we can get some stuff here. So, we're gonna kick down the ladder. You don't have to if you don't want to. Then jump across this chandelier. It's the second chandelier that you encounter. And from here, we're gonna jump down the hole and acquire the golden hourglass.
Right after that, we can get an expanded treasure DLC, which is entirely optional, but it is a spin off. In chapter 8, you can acquire a rhinoceros beetle. This is not a treasure, but you can still sell it. It's just a bonus thing to do. You don't have to do it. Another thing that you don't have to do is the scratched emerald that you shoot from the nest in chapter 8. When you encounter your first red cultist, if you go up to him in uh, his room, he will have a treasure behind him. This is a very difficult part if you don't kill the red cultist super fast. So make sure you kill him first and then deal with everyone else or just run past them. The mirror with pearls and rubies will be in a chest. And on your way to meeting Ada in the bindery, you can get an expanded tr map treasure in this hallway. Right after you meet Ada in the bindery, there will be a treasure in a chest. In the same room, you can find a silver token as part of the treasure thing, expanded thing. Right after you see your first spider in the castle, there will be a small key, which is going to be used in chapter 8. Shortly after that, we are going to get an ornate necklace. To get the ornate necklace, we have to solve the moon and sun puzzle. Literally just do what I do in this video. We are trying to set the lever that's past the fire thing in the ceiling to moon. Okay, so we're gonna set th this lever right here to moon. And then you're gonna continue onwards and then go up and then jump down the hole and we can get to the treasure. After you return from that underground segment, you can uh, head towards this ladder, go up it and you will find an emerald. In the castle battlements, right after you go through this sun door and jump down, immediately turn around and go into the room. There will be a ruby hanging off the ceiling. Right after that, go up the ladder and you can finally use that small key you grabbed earlier. Later on, right before the maze, you can acquire an expanded treasure from this little container right here. This is optional. In the maze, you can find the elegant chessboard right here. So right after the maze or courtyard, we are going to the Grand Hall. The Grand Hall has a lot of things in it, but we only care about treasures, right? Anyway, the very first treasure will be this one right here, very obvious. So we're gonna shoot that and get the Alexandrite. So in uh, the place where you get the goat head, we can throw a flash grenade there so we don't have to do the entire area and we can get the goat head and kill the cultist while you're at it, so he doesn't turn anyone into plagas. After that, we are going to make our way downstairs and get the yellow diamond. The cultist also drops a gem. It is a red barrel. Next step in the armory, in the hallway that leads to the armory, we will be getting the small key, which will be needed to get other treasures, and there is an expanded treasure in this same exact room also. After you fight the armors with Ashley, you can acquire the cubic device. This device will be used to open other treasures. Right after that, we can use the cubic device to acquire a butterfly lantern at the merchant's office. From 
From here, we can take the cart and travel back and acquire an elegant crown. This is part of the extended treasure map DLC, so don't worry about it if you're trying to go for the achievement. So from here, we can also head back to the audience chamber. Remember this place? Yeah. So we're going back and we're going to kill the cultist because now there is a cultist that drops our red barrel. And then we're going to take everyone else out. We can use the small key here to open this drawer in the audience hall. And we can grab the gold bar. Additionally, we can solve the cubic device puzzle here to acquire another treasure. So we have to do this with Ashley, so make sure that you have Ashley at this point. We are going to head back through the courtyard and we are going to ask Ashley to help us. by opening this door and we can acquire the depraved idol. So next up we have Ashley's segment. Ashley needs three treasures to be able to get the achievement. So we're gonna hold F here, lower down the staircase, then grab our lantern back, then go up the staircase and grab the bunch of keys. As soon as we go back down the stairs, we can crouch here and open this chest with the second key. So while still in the library, Ashley can use the bunch of keys here by inserting the third key from the left and going down the lift. Right after you activate all of the bell thingies and you alert all of the plaga armors, we can run towards the blue light here, but before we keep going, take a right and then insert the key and grab the last treasure for Ashley. This will be key number one. So after you complete Ashley's segment, Leon will be able to grab all of the gems and treasures that she grabbed for him. And now as Leon, you can go back through this door into Ashley's area. So let's get some stuff. Before we get any treasures, we can go down the stairs and down the elevator to fight the golden armor. The golden armor enemy is part of a request and he will drop a treasure that is completely optional. So now we are headed to the library. This is where Ashley got her bunch of keys. So we're gonna backtrack and grab the weapon that we can get here, which is the CQBR rifle. The CQBR rifle is acquired by getting the cubic device puzzle here. So heading back through the library, we can get an expanded treasure, treasure, treasure expansion, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, it is a optional treasure that you can get here by shooting this golden container right here. You can completely skip this, but it's a yellow diamond. Additionally, we can also get the cubic device links, which is necessary for the trophy. 
Moving on, right before the ballroom, we can find an expanded treasure right here. The next treasure is located in the ballroom, inside of a chest. The next treasure will be located in the middle part of the ballroom. Go to these ruins and just grab the ruby. After Ramon drops you down to the depths and you defeat the two guard door enemies, you can encounter an elegant crown right before you go into the broken wall in the depths after fighting the Novistadors. Shortly after going the ladder, after getting the elegant crown, we can get a red barrel. It will be hanging off of a ceiling treasure container thingy. And uh, yeah, so this is right before the merchant. Immediately after that, we can get an expanded treasure inside of the merchant's room. While fighting Vertigo in the depths after the first encounter, we can continue onwards here, going back, and to the left there will be a door. We can encounter a yellow diamond inside of a chest here. This is only accessible after you've turned on the power. And of course, after you defeat Vertigo, he will drop a gold monocle. This is an optional boss treasure. After we encounter Louise, we can go up to this railing here. This is where we get the dynamite. And then we're gonna shoot that thing in the distance. We will grab that later, okay? So we need to shoot that from now, or you can just shoot it later. After that, we're gonna go past these stairs from under them. And we can get rid of the chainsaw guy if you want. But uh, there is an expanded treasure right here. And now we can uh, grab the sapphire that we shot earlier when we entered the area, which is located right here. In the very same area, after we grab the dynamite, we can get the chest right here, and there will be a treasure, a golden hourglass. Right after that, we have some giants. These giants drop treasures, but they're not necessary. But they're nice to have. Right after Louise opens the door for you after the boss fight, we can grab the Illuminados pendant from this container right here. After the first minecart at the stopover, we can grab a flagon inside of a chest. After the second minecart section, we can shoot this barrel in the hive and inside of the tunnels here will be a treasure. So after Louise dies and you fight Krauser and we return from the lift, we can grab the small key right here. With the small key, we can travel back to the bindery and finally open the last drawer. You can also do the one in the audience chamber if you didn't do that one already. So this is your last time you get to use these small keys in the castle. And this is also the last small key that you will need in the entire game. So after that, we're going back through the ballroom and into the throne room. This is your last chance to do this, so don't miss it. So you're going to need the cubic device. So this is the location. There is an expanded treasure right here, which is optional, the ornate necklace. And we're going to be getting the golden egg from the cubic device. At the clock tower, after we take the gondola up, take a left immediately after you enter this room and you will get the gold bar in a chat. Once we reach the half point and we shoot the Salazar head, we can continue onwards here, climbing up the stairs, look up at the barricade and you can get the Alexandrite treasure. So after we kill the guy that's using the lever to spawn all of the balls before we go down the ladder, we can actually get a treasure right here to the right on the scaffolding inside of a chest.
immediately after that we can jump down and get the other chest. Once we reach the very top of the elevator we can shoot down this golden container and it will have an expanded treasure. Immediately after that we can walk outside and get the yellow diamond. This is the last treasure that we need in the castle. Be careful though, don't run on these scaffoldings because they will break if you run, so just walk. And of course we can't forget Ramon's treasure after you defeat him. The first treasure in the island is located in the wharf. It is right here in this chest. If you choose to defeat the monster here, he will drop an Alexandrite. This is optional. After we continue onwards and we go up the ladder, in this cave we can acquire the Golden Lynx. After you reach the point where there's a RPG enemy and there's a bunch of containers and a green forklift, take them all out, grab the chest, get the elegant crown, which is a normal treasure, and the expanded treasure that's hanging off of this door thing. This is an expanded treasure. In the surveillance area, there is a velvet blue instead of a briefcase. Continuing on, there is an optional enemy here that you can kill and he will drop a gem. In the room with a guy on fire, immediately turn around, get the briefcase and grab the velvet blue. In the same room, look up and there will be a spinel. This is an expanded treasure. After you turn on the power in this area, before you complete the first green screen puzzle, go to the left here through this door and grab the treasure. After you meet your first regenerator, go back into the room and grab the gold ingot. In the freezer room where you upgrade your card to level 2 and where you find your second regenerator, complete the puzzle and you can acquire a weapon or the gold bar if this is your second playthrough. In the systems area we can acquire an optional treasure DLC. After you kill the regenerator and acquire the wrench and you use it, you can get the biosensor scope or a gold bar if you have already. At the beginning of chapter 14, you can acquire a crystal ore. After Ashley opens the door for you in the facility storage, you can acquire an expanded treasure, which is another gold token. Immediately after that, when we go outside, we can shoot the silver container, which will contain an alexandrite. After you jump down in the cargo depot, there will be a gold bangle inside of this trash. In this furnace room, we can look up at the ceiling and we can get a velvet blue. Right after that, we can acquire an emerald in this sewers area. This Iron Maiden regenerator will drop a red barrel. In the room after that, we can get this expanded treasure right here and grab it once we go across that bridge. In the same area, we can grab the ornate necklace inside of this briefcase in the waste disposal area. While protecting Ashley, we can kill this Iron Maiden regenerator and he will drop a red barrel. After that we can do another optional thing and kill the high value regenerator here. Huh. 
After the wrecking ball and the elevator cutscene, we can go into the Ember storage room. This is the place where we can get an expanded treasure right here on the ceiling. And a crystal ore. Right before the Krauser boss fight in the campsite, we can get a gold bar L located right here. After you kill Krauser and you meet Mike for the first time, you can get a red barrel from behind this house. After Mike uses his rockets for the second time and takes out the tower, go past these red barrels, grab the stuff, go up the ladder and you will be able to get another treasure which is part of the island treasure map. This is going to be a velvet blue right here. One of the brutes here drops a red barrel if you take him out. This is optional but very very useful. At the ruins, after Mike gets killed, jump down this ladder and acquire the Staff of Royalty. Right before you enter the specimen storage and turn the first valve, you can acquire the Splendid Bengal from a chest right here. Immediately after that, we can do the puzzle here and acquire an expanded treasure. This is right after the specimen storage. On our way to save Ashley, we can take out the Brute and he will drop a gem. In the same general area, right before we go through the double doors up the stairs, we can get a red barrel from the expanded treasures. This is optional. In chapter 16, we can acquire a regular treasure right here by shooting it and then grabbing it after Ashley helps us get up the ladder. On our way to the final merchant, we can go and crouch through here and grab the Illuminados pendant. Right before the final merchant location, we can shoot this expanded treasure, which is a spinel, and the very last treasure of the entire game is located in this chest right here. Congratulations, you did it, you got the ingot. Thank you so much for watching. This video took an insane amount of time, research, playtime, editing, and just so much effort put into this video, so congratulations. Hopefully you find this video helpful and entertaining, and if you did, please consider subscribing. Join as a member if you wanna support me and my work. Leave a like, comment, and all that stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.